Hi there, Souls Collectors, and welcome to another Bosk's Bounty video. Welcome to episode 164 of Ask Boss Bounty. This is the weekly Q&A series that drops every Sunday, where I take your questions from the comment section below and do my best to answer them. So if you do have a question for next week's episode and you want your question featured, leave it in the comment section below. And as I said, hopefully you will make it onto next week's video. All right then, guys, with all that being said, hit the like button if you happen to enjoy the video. Subscribe if you're new. By the way, we're only about 300 subscribers away from 25,000, which is a huge milestone for myself and this channel. And obviously, as always, when we do hit 25K, it's a milestone, so there will be a giveaway. So bear that in mind. Thank you so much for subscribing. And let's get on to the first question. Hunter Gregory says, hello boss, quick question for next week. What kind of figure stands do you use? I have tried a few different kinds, but they never worked well. Thanks and love the channel. So that is the problem with uh, figure stands and peg holes and what have you every figure seems to have a different sort of peg hole these days wherever it's too shallow but when I do use figure stands I tend to use ones that I've just got off of eBay um, I managed to pick up a bunch of these ones which are probably knockoff ones from China I think I got some black ones as well but then you get these nice clear ones like so you can get them in different shapes and sizes you can get like like the bigger round ones or the smaller round ones and they're called star stands i will leave a link in the description below to ebay where i get those from morgan pogue says hey boss love the videos keep it up question for next week if they do do a 501st four pack with one name trooper who do you think they would go with yeah this is a difficult one isn't it because obviously we've just had the 212th clone trooper battalion four pack revealed and that comes with waxer and that is all based on sort of the animated clone wars even the paint scheme and everything with the helmets and it's caused a little bit of controversy within the collecting community i think most people would prefer it to be a realistic paint job on that realistic looking clone trooper sculpt that we now have from the you know from the andor card back so i would go with something more realistic for the 501st i would hope maybe they would use commander apo he is definitely in Revenge of the Sith, although I'm not 100% sure if he does actually have that pauldron on or not. That's how I would like them to go. But of course, there's loads of them to choose from from the uh, the Clone Wars show if they did want to go the animated route. And, you know, I think we've had some others as well that look similar to this guy. I think Commander Bo came in one of those Revenge of the Sith 2 packs. So there's another one if you wanted a named clone. But in all honesty, I haven't got a clue what they will do. Hopefully after the poll that we just put out for the community, which roughly had 77% of the people that voted wanting realistic paint schemes on the clones. So yeah, there you go. John R. Rodrigo says, Hi Tim, love the show, mate. Question for next week. You and I think Bosk from the Saga Collection is the best version of the 3.75 out there. Let's say TVC chooses to release Bosk in the line later this year. What changes would you like to see to the figure and the card? What needs to be done for Bosk to absolutely love Bosk? Well, I think when you're looking at the card back, I don't think anything really needs to be done for that. I love the original one. I have plenty of them uh, from the vintage Kenner line. And of course, we do have that vintage Saga collection one as well. Um, so I wouldn't really change that, to be honest. I know there are probably some decent images that people have sort of used for customs and things like that which would be awesome as well. But I, I would probably keep it like Kenna did it. In terms of the figure, then I've often said that, you know, not really ne needs to be done to this guy to make him definitive. He is an awesome, an awesome Bosk. But, but if I had to list the things that I would like improved, then I would just take a look at the Black Series version and sort of, you know, take inspiration from that. Basically, obviously the Black Series version has the, uh, the ball hinged hips. They have the split at the thigh. Neither of those exist on the 3.75 inch version. And he also has the hinges at the wrists, which I think is mega important um, for all figures, really. This guy does not have any hinges at the wrist. He only has the swivel at that sort of lower arm there, just below the elbow, which is a bit annoying. It is a little bit restrictive. And then the other thing that I would do is soften up his flight straps a little bit. They're very brittle. They snap easily. And if you want this guy to sit down in like a cantina or the barge or some, somewhere like that, you're not going to be able to do it because of all those flight strappings there. So I'd like for them to soften those up a little bit and make it easier for him to sit down. Mandalore of DXUN says, good morning, Mr. Bounty. When you move to a bigger space, will you be displaying some of your collection in dioramas, perhaps purchased or built by yourself? If so, will you take us along the, your journey as you put them together, or will you just stick to a more ornamental way of displaying your figures? Well, I've got to be honest, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. I'll have to see you know, when I've actually got that space, how much space I actually have. 
I would love to be able to display my loose figures in diorama type things. Um, but also I think, you know, some of them can go on shelves. It all depends on what, how I end up sort of creating that room. But of course, you guys will be there on the journey with me. I hope when the work starts to do maybe some vlogs on it and, or, and all that kind of thing. And then when it's ready to actually start putting my collection, of course, yeah, I'll definitely be doing some videos about, you know, where I put things and why and things like that. Another question about peg holes here, and it's from my newest channel member, Blake Kemp. So thank you for becoming a channel member, my friend. And he says, G'day Tim, I hope you're well. Thanks for another great vid. Question for next week. With so many shallow peg holes lately, Calcestis, Fennec, Ahsoka, etc. Have you any tips for getting these figures to stand? I'm reluctant to deepen the peg holes as a mate does using a hot needle or using blue tack. Cheers, mate. It is definitely an issue. It really is. And there's some people out there that will say, you don't need stands for your figures. You know, it's just all about, you know, posing them correctly and what have you. And, and I get that, you know, my son is very, very good at posing these figures for me. That's who I get to do it anyway. He did that Mandalorian for me there, who's standing there perfectly well without using a stand. But it is annoying when they're in the cabinet and one little nudge or knock and a lot of them fall over. What I would say is that it's often about the sort of weight distribution of the figure. Take Boba Fett, for example, with his jet pack. He, he often falls backwards. It, this figure is actually quite difficult to keep, to keep upright, basically. But um, I, I feel if you get the sort of knee articulation right and the leg articulation right, just like my son has done with that Mandalorian there, you know, it can be achieved. But apart from that, I've got nothing that I can say about peg holes unless, of course, you know, hot needles and what have you little bit of blue tack to help them stand, but it's it's not ideal, is it? Taco Jawa says, what are the chances of a remnant Stormtrooper troop building four pack? Is that something that would remotely be on Hasbro's radar at this point? They have all the tooling as is. You're right, they have the figure. It would be a repaint of this figure. I, I'm not too sure if they'll do that. I think they weren't in enough of the episodes and I think the one on the card back was pretty easy to get hold of at the end of the day. I think that they can do a lot more with the Stormtrooper uh, mold in four packs, most notably the Sand Trooper. But uh, I've got to say, it's nothing that I've heard of for this year, Remnant Stormtrooper four packs. So sorry about that, buddy. And regarding the Sand Trooper, Alejandro Manzo says, great video as always, boss question for next week. Collectors have been wanting a Sand Trooper again. How likely do you think it is that we get one? And how do you think Hasbro would release one? updated figure in the original TVC card backs or a new card back to match the new mold. I personally feel, and this is just my personal opinion, that if they were to revisit the Sand Trooper, it would most likely be in the form of a four pack rather than like a single carded version again. We've already got two in the line. A third one would perhaps seem like overkill. And I think because it would be a noticeable upgrade to the figure that if they were to do that, we'd probably get a new card back uh, compared to the other two that we've already got. But I feel that obviously with the with the mold that we have, you could create something like this, like my buddy Daniel Chart did. Awesome customization for the Sand Trooper. And uh, yeah, a pretty easy one for Hasbro to do. I know there's some inaccuracies to a Sand Trooper from A New Hope, but I think at this point it'll do. Anna White says, I have a question. Why are the last two questions showing up tiny above the minifigure you was talking about at the end? So this refers to last week's video and the two final questions of the video. All I can say is I just forgot to do the editing for that and make those questions bigger on the screen. So I left them looking a little bit like this as opposed to this. JD says, very nice video question for next week. How many more Return of the Jedi 40th anniversary reveals do you think we can expect? And do you think that we could see any finish the 96? Hoping for Squidhead and Chief Chirper would seem like a waste to not get at least a couple finish the 96 this year. It, it definitely would be a waste within the 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi year. What I can say is that um, Hasbro even said it as well, that you know they're not finished with the 40th anniversary. We're only at the start of the year. I think one of them said that they were, you know, we're about halfway. I don't really believe that for the vintage collection. I think he was talking maybe about, you know, all lines basically. I think for TVC that we've seen more, more than half of it with the ATST, the speeder bike, the bunker, uh, the reissue wave of Jabba's goons. But what I can promise is that there is more Return of the Jedi to come this year. I don't know how much, but there is more to come. And I'm pretty sure one of those at least will be a finish the 96 figure. 
Uh, apart from that, in terms of finishing the 96 in general, I think, you know, within this year, they should should be doing lots more of them. Uh, but I, I know of one, but that's that's all I can say. Cisco Deer says, hey, boss, excellent work. I have a couple of questions for next week. Why were the 212 Clone Trooper four pack costing around 55.99 and change now compared to last year when it was 41.99? on September 8th, 2021. What are we paying for? The paint apps, the packaging, what? Thanks. So um, 2021, I would imagine since then, we've had a couple of price hikes for single carded figures. Um, I think they were originally 12.99, then 14.99 and now 16.99. So that's $4. So $4 times four figures. There's your price hike, basically. If it's just following that simple maths, then that's basically where I think that why those four packs are more expensive. We don't like it, but it's just the way it is. Reckless Dex says, Hi Tim, question for next week. With the return of the Jedi 40th going on and with the release of the Jabba's Boba Fett's throne room playset coming out in the fall, cannot wait for that one. So glad he has pre-ordered it. Do you think we'll get a repack of the TVC Gamorrean Guard figure and or a new reissued TVC Jabba this year? I, yeah, man, I, th this question gets asked a lot about the Gamorrean Guard. It seems that a lot of you out there want more Gamorrean Guards. And I, I'm one of them, actually. They've re-released it already. That's the problem, I think. So maybe they think that collectors out there have got enough of them. But for sure, I would like more Gamorrean Guards. I, I, I bought one or two. I would want more to open, basically. In terms of Jabba, I think that's another one that really should be reissued this year. A lot of people just do not have that one because previous versions either weren't good enough or they melted or the one that came in the barge, obviously you had to buy the barge to get that Jabba. So for me, a TVC Jabba is, you know, something they should do. However, I've got to say, it's not something that I've heard of for this year, but what I have heard is that the Black Series is potentially getting a Jabba the Hut, um, And I think they've had one before already. So work that one out. But um, if you're a Black Series fan and you want a Jabba the Hut, I think you may be in luck this year as for tvc we continue to wait dean backhouse says hi boss question for next week with the announcement of the black chrysanthemum coming to the retro line does that mean we could get a tvc release on a card with a bubble instead of a deluxe box for me the only release so far that warrants it is the e-web cannon and actually prefer the spido mando larger card and bubble if they continue with the deluxe figures is there a possibility of getting them back in a bubble so we can actually see the figures thanks unfortunately i don't think that is an option no i think patrick when i interviewed him at mcm comic con did say that he was not a fan of those larger bubbles and they only did it for the one and ever since then they've gone for you know for these um he also confirmed that paz Vizsla will probably never make it to being on a card back and I worry that that's probably the same case with Black Chrysanthemum once that finally gets revealed. I'm pretty sure it's, you know, it's heavily rumoured that we're going to be getting one of them. I, I would imagine it. we are definitely going to be getting one of them. And it's just a shame, as you say, that the Retro Collection will be getting it on a card back. And the TVC will be in one of those boxes. But I think they'll definitely class it as a deluxe figure. You know, it's a, he's going to be a big boy. Stephen Angel says... I love Ben's custom carbonite bricks. Those are fantastic. My question is, do you think, no, if Hasbro is going to re-release Din Djarin on a season three card with the new thigh piece and all his gadgets, namely the Dark Saber? I don't know for sure or anything, but I, I would be shocked if we don't see any more like Mandalorians this year in terms of Din Djarin Mandalorian. This is the one from that sort of exclusive set with Moff Gideon and, and, and what have you in the Dark Trooper. Um, it would be great if they released him single carded for people that didn't want to get that one. And with the dark saber instead of the spear would be, would be great, wouldn't it? Um, without all of those fire effects and everything, I don't think you really need those for the for the single carded version. Um, is that going to be accurate to season three? We'll have to wait and see. I haven't seen enough of him, but I think it's pretty close. Shocking stuff says, "Hey boss, love little Bosk's diorama from the other week with Wee Bosk peeking out." This is for next week's Q&A. With the Jedi 40th anniversary lines coming, why do you think Hasbro isn't reissuing VC-104, 105 and 114 Old Prune Face? We have Weequay and Neen Num coming, or maybe it's a surprise. Also, why not include the Emperor's Wrath accessories for VC-115 to go with the new Jedi Vader that they pipelined? Would be perfect to go with that Dark Time sculpt. Thanks for the excellent content and information. 
Yeah, so the second part of your question there, the Jedi Wrath, I mean, that is a very scene-specific figure. The head's different and everything. And I think just giving the lightning effects to the uh, removable helmet Vader, I'm not too sure if that would work. And I don't think it'd look too great in the bubble. I actually really like what they've done with that Return of the Jedi Vader. I cannot wait for, to get that, to be honest. That's going to be up there with, like, figure and car back combo of the year kind of thing. In terms of VC 104, 105, and 114, 105 they've already re-released once already. That's the Emperor's Royal Guard. They won't do that again, um, so don't expect that. 104, or am I getting them mixed up? I can't remember. 104 is that Lumat, and then 114 is Pruneface. Um, I really wish that they would re-release Lumat because I haven't got that figure loose. He's one of the only Ewoks that I need loose. And he's a right pain to get. He's expensive, you know? So that, for me, would be one that they should be reissuing there was a rumor that they were going to be reissuing low gray and i think out of all the ewoks that you could potentially reissue it's it's this one he was part of that final wave that was online only as tvc 1.0 was dying as was prune face uh, prune face for me probably isn't one of the bigger well-known characters and maybe they wouldn't go with that one so much but lumat with all the other stuff that re that they are releasing for that scene essentially with all the you know, the Endor scene or what have you, he would be perfect, man. And I'm, I'm a bit gutted they aren't doing that because I do need him loose. Brad Kelly says, hey, boss, great episode as always. Thanks so much for all the great content. Question for next week. What other lines do you collect? And are you as passionate about those lines as TVC? So the only thing that I was really collecting was the 3.75 inch GI Joes, which they seem to have stopped now. And they even started doing a few O-ring ones as well. You know, I was getting the retro ones. I'm not as passionate about that as I am Star Wars. N no way. The only other line that I think I would collect that I would be as passionate about is probably G1 Transformers. I would really love to sort of go out there and get all of the ones that I had as a kid. All of the mini Autobots, Sunstreaker. I do have the red uh, Lamborghini. I can't remember his name. Sideswipe, is it? I do have him boxed and everything, so that's one. But there's loads, you know, Megatron, Optimus Prime. I had them all as a kid. And that's probably something that I would feel as passionate, maybe not as passionate as Star Wars, because I think that's in a league of its own. But um, yeah, I think Transformers would be the thing that I would collect as well as Star Wars. And in terms of Star Wars, for me, it's just TVC and then the vintage line. So um, anything 3.75, not so much a retro collection, but you know, I've pretty much got everything that I want now for the vintage line, the Kenner line. I've got all, you know, the complete 96 run and what have you. So there isn't really too much more for me to collect in there apart from just trying to get all the Bosque variant card backs. So so there you go. Star Killer says, question for next week. Hi Bosque, any chance we'll ever see an all newly tooled definitive Darth Revan? As you know, he won the fan vote a few years back, yet Hasbro cancelled the release due to the community uproar over them deciding to reissue the old sculpt. With Revan being such a popular character, will Hasbro finally give us an all new tooled Darth Revan? So I'm not too sure about all new tooled, but I, I still think that they will revisit Darth Revan I think they they are aware that he is a very popular character and they've mentioned him a few times about redoing him and I think as I've said before sometimes things like mirror the Black Series so if you think about what they did with the Black Series they gave you that Darth Revan and then they repainted him for the Jedi version you could see them potentially doing that, couldn't you, for the for the vintage collection? Because then they get two figures out of one. This is No Cave Says Question for next week. I really enjoyed your video about the five things Hasbro should stop doing in the vintage collection, notably about the main characters. Yeah, that video did surprisingly well, much better than I thought it was would do, really. It was just a, a sort of off-the-cuff idea that I had to do, recorded it, and it, it did pretty well. So thank you, everybody that watched that video. I'll leave a link to it now if you haven't watched it. Uh, this is No Cave says, with the release of the new Return of the Jedi speeder bike with the Scout Trooper, there seems to be an opportunity here. Since Hasbro has already pipelined the speeder bike for the Mandalorian, what do you think about Hasbro releasing the Return of the Jedi speeder bikes with Luke and Leia? It might be an opportunity to update their respective TVC figures by giving them the appropriate articulation to ride the speeder bikes. Barbell hips for both, appropriate articulation in the arms, etc. I mean, that would be awesome, my friend, but I, I've got to say, I don't think that's going to happen um, because I think when they put figures in with these vehicles, it's at low cost. So the biker scout that's with the speeder bike is a partial tool. It's quite an old sculpt. They've just done some few updates to it. 
And then the one that they've included in the bunker is using the exact same figure, just with a removable helmet and a newly sculpted head. I can't really see them sort of spending a lot of money on sort of updating Princess Leia and Luke Skywalker uh, by putting them in packages with, with a speeder bike, if you see what I mean. I honestly think we've missed the opportunity with these, which is the biggest disappointment for me when I was talking about, you know, main characters need to be done properly because are they ever going to revisit at Leia Endor? I, I, I can't see them doing it. I can't, I really can't. And it's, it's a depressing thought because yeah, we've got that speeder bike and she can't ride the damn thing. Anyway, yeah, that's a bit of a depressing thought for the last question, but Unfortunately, I just can't see it happening, buddy. All right, then, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And thank you to my Patreon supporters and channel members. Your support is greatly appreciated. Don't forget, if you have a question for next week's episode, to leave it in the comment section below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new. And we shall see you on the next one.